Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and today we are going to talk about the 10 books I've read so far in the month of March. So it's only the 14th of March and I've already read 10 books. And because I hate reading wrap-ups and I'm helping my future self, I'm going to record a mid-month reading wrap-up so I don't have 20 plus books to talk about at the end of the month. If you watched my vlog, that maybe went up earlier this morning, you'll have seen that I recorded this once and I actually wasn't recording. I didn't hit the record button. So this is gonna be lightning round because I'm already fed up with this. I uh, am mad at myself and <laughs> I already talked about these books for 25 minutes. So we're just gonna go lightning fast. I'll tell you a few things about each of these books and I will also reference what day I finished the book because if you're really curious about more of my thoughts, I talk about it more in depth in the daily vlogs that I've been doing. So you can look at the day and find where the book is in that vlog. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm just so done. Anyway, okay. The first book I read in March that I completed on day one of middle grade March was Otter by Katherine Applegate. This is a sweet book written in verse from the perspective of an otter named Otter. And the sweet otter is saved by an aquarium in Monterey Bay, California. And then this otter goes on to teach other otters how to be otters. Basically, that's the gist. It's very sweet. Um, and it's based off of real otters. Things that um, some scientists actually did with otters about like re mothering, reassigning mothers to baby otters that are found without their mothers or rescued without their mothers. So very sweet. Really, really enjoyed this one. Gave it five stars. The next book I finished in March on the third day of middle grade March is Patina by Jason Reynolds. This is the second book in the track series by Jason Reynolds. The first being Ghost and now the second being Patina. We follow a young woman named Patty who is on the track team with Ghost and Sunny and Lou, which are books three and four. And Patina, Patty, really hates to lose, but she lost right away in the beginning of this in a race. And so we basically follow her as she rigorously trains to never lose again. She also has this uh, research project that she's doing with some girls at her kind of highbrow academy. So she is uh, feeling lots of stress from that project, but then also has a lot of weight on her shoulders from her home life. Um, her mother has relinquished her rights to her, feeling like she couldn't take care of Patina and her little sister Maddie because she had a double amputation of her legs due to diabetes. And so Patina and Maddie are being raised by her aunt and uncle. So Patina has a lot of weight on her shoulders, a lot of responsibility she feels to take care of her younger sister Maddie, but also to still live up to the expectations that her mom has of her. She's got a lot going on, this young woman, Patty, but running is her outlet and she runs for her mom who can't run. So really good. I think I gave it four stars. It wasn't like super tip top. You'll hear me saying this probably throughout the whole video. Not the highest book, not the best book I've read, but still really good and had some great messages. So four stars for Patina by Jason Reynolds. The next book I finished on day five of middle grade March is When Stars Are Scattered by Omar Muhammad and Victoria Jameson. This is a middle grade memoir written as a graphic novel about Omar Muhammad's life in a refugee camp in Kenya. He and his younger brother Hassan escaped Somalia when they were very, very young, like four years old. And uh, they watched their father being killed and then had to escape without their mother. And they go on this journey to Kenya to a refugee camp and we follow their lives in the refugee camp without anybody to take care of them except for themselves. They do have this kind of foster mother who is a very integral part of their life, but uh, Omar always feels so responsible for his younger brother and that uh, he needs to care for him and doesn't want this uh, foster mom, Fatima, I believe her name is, to take the place of his real mother because he still believes that his mother is somewhere out there. 
Anyway, in the refugee camp, Omar, well, everyone is always trying to be resettled. They don't want to live in this refugee camp forever. So the dream is America. And for Omar, the dream is America. And so uh, he is working toward that goal to be resettled in America. He starts attending school and finds this love of learning and decides that if he could continue his education, he would want to be a social worker to help refugees in their new resettled communities. So this was really, really beautiful. The artwork is really lovely. Um, it felt like you were just integrated into this story so well through the artwork. I really love, especially the uh, nighttime scenes, like the cover when stars are scattered, <laughs> stars on the cover. But uh, yeah, those are some of my favorite or favorite pieces of artwork in here. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for a heart-wrenching book about young boys fending for themselves in a refugee camp and uh, getting a pretty good look at what a refugee camp is like in Kenya, I would definitely pick this one up. A great middle grade memoir. Speaking of middle, middle grade memoirs, the next book I read in the month was Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This is her memoir geared toward middle graders and uh, it's written in verse. I listened to it. It was lovely to hear, hear this book uh, read by the author herself and kind of hear uh, the inflection and uh, how she envision this book to come across. She's a beautiful writer and so the the poetry scattered throughout was just um, lovely to hear from the author's mouth. This one we follow Jacqueline in her childhood as she grows up in a few different locations in the United States, first in Ohio, then in the South and uh, South Carolina I think, so not super South, but far south enough where we see uh, racism definitely evident as she grows up in the 60s and then in New York. Uh, she is always compared to her older sister who is so unbelievably smart and she is seen as dumb because she doesn't measure up to her sister but she is a beautiful writer and so she has that wonderful uh, talent going for her. Uh, I do want to read some of the quotes from Brown Girl Dreaming because I just really, really thought it was beautiful. One is about her words. I want to catch words one day. I want to hold them, then blow gently, watch them float right out of my hands. And then one about stories. On paper, things can live forever. On paper, a butterfly never dies. She was writing something for school about butterflies but I think that that is such a great uh idea that stories live on forever on paper things can live forever even though the world is changing around us and then lastly she had a lot of haikus uh scattered throughout and my favorite haiku was toward the end and it is even the silence has a story to tell you just listen listen so I uh, really enjoyed this one I think I ended up giving it four stars the next book I completed on the 7th of the month is not a middle grade. It's my adult read that I carried over from February and that is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is a historical fiction surrounding the life of a chemist named Elizabeth Zott. We are following her in the 1960s and so there's a lot of issues with being a chemist in a man-heavy occupation. She, yeah, she goes through it, poor lady. Anyway, she basically can't earn a living wage being a chemist in the 1960s for her and her daughter, and so she has to leave science, or at least research science, and <clears throat> become a television cooking show host. <laughs> and she calls it a chemistry show even though it's a cooking show but she is able to instill so much power and um strength into her female viewers she is such a strong woman she's not afraid to tell it like it is to stand up for who she is and what she believes in and to tell men 
not to mansplain things to her because she's a strong woman and she knows what she's talking about. I loved this book. I It was witty and uplifting while still discussing very difficult topics such as uh, grief and uh, misogynistic workplaces and single motherhood and uh, yeah. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. I read it for my uh, book club that I have with my friends and we had some great discussion about this book. There's also a lovely dog who just cares for his people so well. His name is 630 and I think that that is an awesome name for a dog. Anyway, loved this one. Elizabeth Zott is my role model. <laughs> Okay, what's next? I am getting so tired, friends. Um, the next one is Other Words for Home, which I finished on the ninth day of middle grade March. So this is Other Words for Home written by Jasmine Warga. This is another book written in verse. I was obviously really going for shorter books to try to get them done in the month. But I also saw that our group read was written by Jasmine Morga this month and so I saw this on the shelves next to our group read and wanted to give it a try. In this one we follow a young Syrian woman named Judah as she is growing up in Syria with her parents and her brother. Her mom and Judah decide that they need to leave the country just with everything going on, the turmoil in Syria, and so her mom and Judah leave Syria to visit her uncle in the United States. They live with them for quite a while in Michigan and she has to learn what it's like to be a young Syrian woman in the United States, a young woman who is Muslim and wears a hijab and um, just sees the prejudice that people have against her and the Islamophobia that people have against her. Uh, yeah, so this one was really beautiful, a, a great coming of age story for a young woman who was taken from her country and has to grow up in very different circumstances than what she's used to. I love, I loved this one. I gave it five stars. Uh, sorry, I am really losing my drive here. Okay, the next book I read, completed on the 10th of the month, was A Rover Story by Jasmine Morga, same author. And this is a very different story than Other Words for Home. This is a science fiction. We follow a Mars rover named Rez as he is preparing for his trip to Mars and as he's on Mars collecting soil samples and pictures and information to send back to Earth. Rez is just like he's got this human spirit and he feels human emotions and so it honestly feels like Wally. He is just a sweet robot that really cares for his mission, but then also cares for the friends he makes along the way. He has this uh, little helicopter dude fly that goes with him on the journey. And then also they have this satellite that is um, orbiting above Mars who kind of watches over them named Guardian. So he... Uh, he deals with a lot, a lot of uh, time by himself, but also with his friends and a lot of time roving Mars. There's also this aspect in this book uh, where we see letters written to Rez from what starts out as a sixth grader. Her name is Sophie and her mom, Rania, worked on Rez. And so at first there's a lot of anger and resentment from Sophie toward Rez because her mom spent more time with Rez than she did with Sophie. But then later on through the letters, we see Sophie learn to love Rez and just fully support his mission on Mars and root for him as he is trying to get back to the Earth. I really enjoyed this one, kept me reading, but again, wasn't like tip top favorite. So I gave it four stars. The next book I completed on the 11th of the month was a little path off of middle grade again with a YA and a manga. This is the fourth volume of Spy Family by Tatsuya Endo. If you don't know about Spy Family, we follow a spy 
named Twilight, or that's his code name, Twilight, but in this story he goes by Lloyd because he is trying to infiltrate a school to get closer to his enemy. His enemy's son goes to the school. Anyway, he needs to adopt a daughter to get into the school to get closer to the son. Anyway, he adopts a young woman named Anya who's a telepath, but Lloyd doesn't know she's a telepath. And he also fake marries Yor, who is an assassin. And nobody knows who each other are, that they're a spy, that they're an assassin, that they're a telepath, except for Anya, because she's a telepath and she knows. In this one, this was the most suspenseful of the volumes that I've read so far. Uh, each of the family is trying to help stop this bomb from detonating. While also dog shopping and finding this sweet addition to their family, Bond bond dog uh so he's a great addition to the family and cares so much for Anya and her safety this was a fun little interlude in between some of my middle grade and I might pick up volume five in this month as well okay we are getting close <laughs> for the second time the next book I finished on the 12th of the month is Two Night Owl from Dogfish. This is written by Holly Goldberg Sloan and Meg Wolitzer. This is basically Parent Trap in a book, which I loved Parent Trap growing up. So I thought I was really gonna enjoy this and I did. Uh, in this one, we follow two young girls, Avery Bloom and Bette Devlin, as they start correspondence over email, realizing that their dads are in love. And Avery doesn't wanna believe it at first, but Bette knows and they ultimately realize, yes, that's the truth. Their dads send them to a summer camp to get to know each other. And at first they're like, no way dads, we are not gonna be friends. We're going to uh, basically, yeah, just not interact with each other. But that's not the case. They become great friends. They almost become sisters and uh, they love each other. Then there's some conflict between the dads and the girls have to work to get their dads back together. And it's really fun. Uh, my only, well, no, there are a couple qualms. I felt a little bored at some points with the, um, the more of the campy scenes. And then my other qualm was I listened to this and I would not recommend listening to it because the first third of the book is one email back and forth between Avery and Bette. And you know how in an email you type a subject and the subject was, you don't know me. But when they hit reply, the subject changes to re, you don't know me. And then they hit reply again and it's re, re, you don't know me. Well, the narrators go on to like have 40 re's before you don't know me. So it's literally re, 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 you don't know me. And it's like, can we just like skip past the re's and just realize that yes, this is still the same email thread without saying re 40 times in a row. It was so annoying and I skipped past it. So I would not recommend listening to this audiobook unless you're just gonna skip past those re's. So that was really annoying, but ultimately I loved Avery and Bette and their spunk and the way they cared for each other and cared for their dads. Very fun, Parent Trap-esque book. Lastly, the book I finished about two hours ago on audio was The War I Finally Won by Kimberly Brew Baker Bradley. This is the sequel to The War That Saved My Life. I absolutely loved The War That Saved My Life. It is a World War II historical fiction, probably one of the best middle grade World War II historical fiction books I've read, The War That Saved My Life. That is um, about two young people, brother and sister, Ada and Jamie, as they are relocated to the country during the London Blitz. And they are put in the house of Susan, who is just the most caring, wonderful woman you could ask for to be a pseudo mom in this situation. And uh, the other thing about Ada is she has a club foot. And so she has a lot of difficulties walking and doing normal daily tasks. So in the first book, we follow Ada and Jamie as they are trying to figure out their new life in the country and learn how to live without their mom who really was kind of awful to them. But now, here are maybe some spoilers. I'll put a little spoiler thing here if you're gonna read The War That Saved My Life. Uh, their mother has relinquished rights and 
uh, Susan is going to adopt them. And so at the beginning of this book, Ada's club foot is fixed and we are able to see her grow and flourish as a young girl without uh, any disability anymore. I, uh, I was comparing this book the whole time to The War That Saved My Life and this one just didn't measure up to it. I think I'm going to give it three stars just because there was a lot about horses and I, there was a lot of horse stuff in the first book too but I didn't feel like that like took over the whole story. This one had a lot about horses and I'm not the biggest horse fan so I kind of checked out during those times and I don't know it just wasn't as compelling of a read as the one that saved my life so I think I'm gonna stick with three stars on this one unless sleeping on it I changed my mind but yeah three stars it was still a good book and like very easy to read like very easy to listen to I guess I should say but and I, I love Ada and Jamie they're just such sweet characters and Susan their mom or their new mom that takes care of them but it just, yeah, I don't know. I loved continuing their story. But I also don't know if it's necessary. I don't know. I gave it three stars. It was still a good book. So those are the 10 books I have read so far this month. I am really happy with how my reading month is going. I feel like most of these were four and five stars, only one three star. So that's, I mean, pretty good. I'm excited to see what the rest of the month has to hold. Uh, sorry for my low energy in this video everyone I just <laughs> I'm so disappointed that the first the first cut didn't come through but here they are here are the books I've read so far in March let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts are on them if you agreed with me if you disagreed with me I'd love to have some bookish conversation with you in the comments down below like this video on your way out consider subscribing to my channel if you would like to see more bookish and bullet journaling content from me and I'll see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.